Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ansu Dupree, your Navy Transition Coach, and I am here to help you to navigate life both in and out of the Navy. Um, I am on my reschedule drill weekend. Um, so I'm at the hotel and I'm just making this quick video because there are so many things that I didn't know about annual training that we have to do every single year this is my first time doing annual training since 2018 or like it actually was 2019 it was like March 2019 but it's been a minute and it's a different unit and all these sorts of things so I wanted to just come on here and talk to you guys about preparing for annual training so I'm just gonna dive right into it all right so I did not do annual training last year I rejoined the reserves in 2022 October um, so it was a new fiscal year, didn't do it for the fiscal year 23, but I'm trying to make sure that it gets done for the fiscal year 24. I already submitted my, um, in rows request. Um, well, the requirement was already made. So you put in your request, I think it's called a BNR. I forgot what it means. Basically a request to do annual training right with your unit so your unit puts in a request you get approved you go fill it out in in rows and it goes through the chain of command make sure you're good to go you know you're not on any dink list make sure you have um, just everything you know taken care of um, so for me when it goes through in rows it goes to these different apartments or departments mine got stuck at dental and I was, it was, when it gets stuck at any of the sections or any of the departments, your, your orders will be technically on a hard hold, which means you can't move forward, you can't move back, you can't do anything unless you get this one thing figured out. Okay, you get that figured out, mine was dental, all I have to do is give them my dental exam from my civilian dentist or from the dentist at the NRC, but we haven't had one lately, so that's the whole thing. Anyway, it's getting done. It's already figured out, right? So they released me out of hard holds. It went to the next person. And after that, no more hard holds and it got approved. Once it gets approved, it goes to a system called DTS, Defense Travel System, okay? And in this system is how you can um, schedule your flights. You can schedule your rental car. Um, you can schedule your lodging. Um, and all of the information that you'll need will be in that. That's a whole different topic. It's a lot, but just know that everything is going to be through DTS when you want to reserve your stuff. Okay? But, okay, so that's the travel side. The paying of the order side, things like that. Um, per diem and all that stuff. But I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys. Just a little hair. I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about the, that did not help, <laughs> that did not help at all. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about the, the orders themselves, um, themselves and actually preparing to go, right? So yes, you did your DTS, you did your in row stuff, but what else do you need? Well, you have to make sure that your, if you have children or family, you have to make sure that your dependency, um, what is this dependency application which is called your family care plan is good to go right let me show you what I'm trying to show without showing too much information I'm sorry I said that's so wrong your dependency application is not the same as your family care plan two separate things I'm gonna talk about both of them but I said them wrong so let me correct myself your dis dependency application is your page two yes it's your page two okay um also known as your red da stuff all this stuff can be found in instance is basically updating your member information whether you have a spouse your your dependent information um your sgl well not really sgli but yes um what else is on this thing I think that's it but you can go on to InSips and you'll find out all about that stuff so anyway let me show you the um, this is what it looks like at the top 
okay this is this right here is what's important hope you saw that did i point to the right thing where's my thing okay there we go this right here is what's important for you to know okay or this right here there we go this my bad y'all <laughs> this i'm using my webcam so napers 107 um slash 602 and then on the back side which is it's really two forms um i don't even know if i have both forms do i have both forms i think this is just one form but there are two forms anyway it's done for me i'm good to go with this stuff but i wanted to show you the family care plan part as well Let me make sure i'm putting this paper here so i don't share too much information um and all this is really is a checklist so all this is is a checklist and me saying that i agree with what is in this packet what i filled out and so the second thing that i just showed you is the family care plan certificate so you're basically putting on here that um, you agree to all of these different things like you acknowledge that this is uh, essentially what you're agreeing to this is your responsibilities and the responsibilities of other people right but there's sections on here about the caregiver the people who's going to be taking care of your kids when you're on duty when you're on orders when you're not present when you're overseas or when you're recalled um, so it has their name their address phone number email all that stuff and it's different sections so there's a who's going to be the temporary caregiver in case of death or incapacity they have a section for that who's going to be the short-term caregiver in case of the member's absence of a duration of less than 30 days who's going to be like is there a dual military couple if so put their information on there and then it has some more stuff like um this has to be certified i want to say every year I want to say every year but if not every year it does oh yes so it says service member annual certifications so every year you're gonna to have to go back and sign this the CEO is gonna to have to verify it um, so it lasts for three years this one in anyway okay then it has a section for your financial arrangements and logistical arrangements you know for the people to take care of your dependents medical stuff educational stuff um, legal stuff and that's that okay so this is what you need to fill out this is a part of the process of preparing for AT making sure your page 2 is updated making sure your SGLI stuff which is the service service members group life insurance um, making which is what you also do on um, on um, um, incifs with when you update your page two it has you know what percentage of what actually no that's not the same thing but there I don't want to get into it never mind scratch that anyway um, but this is the part of it so this is just with the NRC this stuff is specifically with your with your NRC okay now my unit has also given me something called an individual training plan okay I'm out of um, my units out of Norfolk and yeah that's where I'll be doing my annual trainings okay now this individual training plan is essentially their goal for my training right very self-explanatory there's a couple of things in here that I have to do um, so there's some shipyard initial qualifications that I have to get done there are some personnel qualifications some PQS's such as um, 3M 301 the maintenance person qualification and then you have your quality maintenance craftsman 301 um, NAMTS fundam core fundamentals a couple of online trainings that I can do by myself these are the online trainings that I have to get done to complete this um, to complete this little ITP individual training program okay so this is what I got before I even arrive there's some things in here that I need to do before I even go to um, that before I even go to Norfolk to do my annual training okay 
of this food order. All right. And so let me go back to the dependency application, which is your page two and your family care plan. You need to make sure that everyone who is in this packet, okay, your family care plan, who is a part of your dependency data and all that stuff, that they have a copy or they have access to a copy. All right. So I printed out three because three people, well, two people plus myself um, needs access to it. Okay. All right. So that's that. But another thing that I recently got yesterday, actually, was an email from the uh, LPO of my unit over in Norfolk, right? Hold on. I got an email that's basically a welcome aboard email. So in this email, um, let me see. Uh -oh. This is essentially kind of what it looks like. I'm trying to prevent email from being shown, but it's essentially a welcome aboard, as you can see. Oh, you can see. Okay. Anyway, so this is the welcome aboard email, what it looks like. Um, and this is basically, they list out, list out all of the things that you need to know within the email okay so if you scroll 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 they give you all the information and then um, there's actually some links or some uh, files that you can open to see your actual welcome aboard packet like it gives you what the base looks like where the you know where you have to go things you can do and cannot do um, yeah it's a full welcome aboard packet Okay, I'm not going to show you that, but just so you know what to be looking forward to when you get your email about going to do your annual training for the first time. Okay, let's see. So for me, when I go there, I'll be doing Indoc. Um, yeah, I'll be doing Indoc. So I won't most likely. Well, hold on. So annual training is 14 days. That includes two days of travel. So it really is 10 days, right? Let me see. My annual training is, it starts on a, hold on, let me get it together. It starts on a Saturday. So my travel day is a Saturday. My end doc is going to be on that Sunday, and then I'll be working, as far as I know, I'll be working with my unit for the rest of the time. <clears throat> and then I'll be traveling and heading out on a Saturday. Yes. I'll be heading out on Saturday. Okay. And then, um... I don't know, I think that's as much as I have for you right now because this is just like preparation. So, like I mentioned, I am um, on a reschedule for my drill weekend. So, I'm taking this time to get everything prepared that needs to get prepared. So, remember, like you still have to complete your drill even though you might not be there for the drill because like the drill for the month that you're going to be doing AT. You still have to reschedule that time to actually complete it. Unfortunately, you can't just pick any weekend that you want. You have to pick a weekend that they're actually doing the training or doing the drills. Um, some of them have two drill weekends a month, some NRCs. But, um, or you could just reschedule it for during the week sometime, which is what I did. Um, but remember, you have to get it done. And if I were you, I would reschedule my drill to be before... I leave so you can actually take that time to prepare for your annual training because it really sucks trying to come back and forth back and forth on base or to the NRC to get this stuff prepared when you could have just used those two days to prepare right so I'll be doing my trainings that I told you about my online trainings to um, complete my individual training plan if I could do those ahead of time 
that'd be great so that's what I'm gonna do um what else do I have yeah I'm pretty sure that's it that's it that's all um, if you guys have any questions about annual training let me know I'll most likely make another video when I'm actually there or when I'm on my way that would actually be pretty cool to make a vlog video of me going on my annual training um, yeah I think I might I think I might do that you can go with me to get on the plane and go and find my lodging and get the rental car and all of that so you can know kind of what to expect when you go and do your annual training too so I hope this was helpful if you have any questions make sure that you leave me a um, comment down below and I will try to get back to you with that answer um, yeah so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can't think of anything so hope you have a great one make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and let me know any other things you want to know about regarding um, the Navy Reserves transitioning going active going civilian anything um, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye, y'all.